Among the different horror indie games that have surged in the past years, there has been a trend of Resident Evil clones with some higher production value, featuring some nice visuals, story, and gameplay. Today I am going to check out a game that falls under that umbrella and that seeks to give players their own take on sci-fi survival horror. Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy and this is my non-spoiler review for Daymare 1994 Sandcastle for the PS5. The game was developed by Invader Studios and published by 4 Divinity PTE. Daymare 1994 Sandcastle is a prequel to Daymare 1998. You play as Agent Delilah Regis, a former garment spy now in the service of Hades. You are tasked to retrieve a package from a facility in the Nevada desert. When you get there, things are not what they seem and you find yourself in some sci-fi horror complicated situation. The story of this game is told through voice acted cutscenes, documents and audio logs. In regards to the voice acting, it's decent and gets the job done, and the writing can be very, very cheesy. So let's talk about the visuals of this game. Damien 1994 goes for realistic visuals with some very nice lighting and sci-fi aesthetics. Character models look pretty good and so does the environment. However, there are some things that I do need to point out. Some of the animations in the faces of the characters do look stiff. A lot of the time, the gaze of the characters looks lost in space. And even though the environment looks pretty good, some of the textures do look low resolution. So in general, the visuals are good enough to carry you through, but there will be moments where you will have a laugh with the mix of the lost gazes, stiff animation, and cheesy writing. In terms of performance, the game features a performance and fidelity mode on PS5. On performance mode, it ran consistently on what seemed to be 60 FPS, 1080p. So let's talk about the music in this game. In general, this game goes for a similar approach as to other horror games, where there is some very low volume music in the background to create a little bit of atmosphere and tension, and it's pretty good. But there are moments where the music cranks up with some sci-fi synth tones, and it sounds really good. Let's move out. There's no time to waste. So let's talk about the gameplay. Daymare 1994 Sandcastle is a third person story driven survival horror game. The gameplay focuses on fighting and puzzle solving. In terms of the fighting, the game focuses on long distance fighting via guns. The game does not feature melee combat. You have only a handful of weapons. You start out with the rifle and the shotgun. You have a quick menu from which you can change between weapons and activate your flashlight and your scanner. And the scanner is an item that can be used to scan objects in the environment and get special documents or pieces of information. So in that aspect, the scanner plays into a little bit of exploration. Later on, you will find an ice freezing weapon that plays a key part throughout the entire game. And it is used not only for fighting the enemies, but to solve environmental puzzles too. In terms of the enemies, I would have to say that enemies are extremely limited in this game. There isn't too much variety, there are only a handful of enemy types. Additionally, there are no boss fights in the game. Basic enemies are pretty fast and very aggressive. When you kill them, a lightning orb comes out of them and you have the chance to kill the electrical orb with your freezing gun. If you don't, the electrical bolt can activate other enemies in the area. This adds an element of tension to the gameplay where you need to be very careful on how you take down your enemies because sometimes the best approach is not to kill them all as fast as you can. Sometimes it's best to kill them one by one and destroy the electrical orb before it raises another enemy. Some special enemies will require you to use the freeze gun before you can kill them. Gunplay in this game is 
in my opinion, pretty slow. You can adjust the aiming sensitivity in the options menu, but even then, it feels slow, and I think it's because of the animations. I'll get more into that later on. You can find some upgrades for your weapons, and the freeze gun can be upgraded at specific stations that are designated for that. So let's talk about the puzzles, which is the other big part of the gameplay in this game. In general, I would say that the puzzles begin simple and easy to solve, but later on they become very obtuse. Sadly, not only do the puzzles become obtuse as you progress through the game, some of the puzzles have a time limit. Specifically, puzzles to open certain lockers or doors where you can find additional resources. You have only a limited amount of times that you can try, and if you fail, you're locked out of it. So let's talk about the level design and exploration. I have to say that the game setting is very interesting. The entire game takes place in an underground military base. And personally, I thought that it was going to get boring, but it didn't. The aesthetics of the place are like a good mix of what you would expect to see in a military base, as you've seen them in Hollywood movies, with a mix of sci-fi elements that keep it interesting. Sadly, I do have to say that exploration in this game is basically non-existent. I mentioned the scanner, which is an item that you have that you can use to scan objects in the environment. To me, that's as far as it goes in what regards to exploration because in general the game is very linear and even if you reach a space where there are a lot of doors you will soon notice that all the doors are closed except the ones that you need to go through so let's talk about the cons and the pros of this game i'm gonna start off with what i liked about this game first of all the game has a cool setting and atmosphere like i mentioned before the game takes place in an underground base and honestly the lighting and the aesthetics are very interesting and at times the music really helps create an incredible atmosphere that feels very sci-fi-ish and I loved it. The other thing that I would have to say that is a pro in this game is the lore of this world. I think this game has some very promising lore elements, right? I say lore because they obviously present you with a lot of elements in the story as in what's happening in the present in the game but there's a lot of stuff that happens in the background when you read the documents that you find and when you listen to the audio logs and obviously the implications of a lot of those things are very interesting for future entries in this game and to me it communicates that this franchise has a lot of potential so let's talk about the cons of this game first of all I would have to mention that the game is too linear. The game features an interesting setting in what is the underground base and the lore is very interesting like I said before. Sadly, the game doesn't really have an exploration element. You never have a moment in the game where you're dropped in an area and you have to explore to find key items to open doors and have to backtrack. That, that really doesn't happen. The entire time, it seems like there are a lot of rooms to explore, but they are all closed and only the main path is available. And the second critique that I would have to point out, and this is a big one for me, is the stiff gunplay and slow character animations. Here is where I need to explain carefully why this is such a huge con for this game. If I was to put in percentages, how much fighting and how much puzzle solving this game has, I would have to say that this game is 75% fighting and 25% puzzle solving. When you look at the puzzles, they are either simple or obtuse and at times uninteresting. So the weight of the gameplay falls on the fighting and sadly, in my opinion, it's not very good. Gunplay feels very hollow and slow. The feedback from shooting the weapon is not very good. The animations for changing weapons and reloading are too slow. And the animations of the enemies are too fast. This puts you constantly in a situation where it feels uncomfortable to face multiple enemies. Your weapon options are only the shotgun, assault rifle, and the freeze gun. And it feels extremely limited. There's no melee option in this game. So in that sense, the survival aspect of this game to me is almost non-existent because you need to use the bullets that you have to defeat the enemies because you have no way of saving up on them. But in general, it's just not satisfying. And I cannot stress enough how much this took away from my experience with the game. So in conclusion, I went into this game expecting a basic but serviceable survival horror experience. At first, the atmosphere and setting of the game pulled me in, but sadly the cracks in the castle walls were very soon easy to see. The extreme linearity and the horrible gunplay and fighting made the ceiling and the walls of the castle fall on me. By the end, disappointment and frustration was all that the game left me with. Sadly, in my opinion, 
there's no fun to be had here. For this reason, I do not recommend Daymare 1994 Sandcastle. So that's going to be it for my non-spoiler review of this game. Like I always say, even if I don't recommend the game, I suggest that if you are interested in this game, check it out and show the developers some love. That's gonna be it for my non-spoiler review. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys next time. Bye. That's not possible. Who the hell are you? And what are you? Fuck. You're nothing but a coward. A disgusting, traitorous coward. You got what you deserved. Did you really think you could make it? You managed to kill a lot of them with that device, but you'll need more than liquid nitrogen to survive hell. <laughs> courage, perseverance. I feel sorry for you. You chose the wrong path, and now you're lost forever. But not you. You aren't lost yet. There's still hope for you, girl. Your mission is still in progress. Who the fuck are Hi everyone, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with our content.